Time to tackle some of the miscellaneous leftover stuff on the CB750, so welcome to Hack a Week. So there's a few more things here that I consider miscellaneous items that we're going to tackle today. Let's get started. A little something to take note of on these caps that go on the bottom of the forks, hold the axle in place. Uh, there is one side of these that's a little bit taller than the other. Let's measure them here. This one measures about 17.15 millimeters. This one measures 15.6. So the smaller side should go toward the rear of the bike. So you put it on and you tighten up that front one first, then you tighten up this back one. There should be a small gap at the back. Somebody pointed this out to me on uh, the uh, comment section and in one of the single overhead cam forum postings, someone mentioned that this is the case and I indeed had them backwards so I'll tighten up this one don't have the torque wrench right now but I would go about 15 foot pounds and then we'll tighten this one see the gap that's still there let me see if I can zoom you in a bit you'll see what I'm talking about there's still a little gap right there and that's the way it's designed that way it pinches and they want it pointing toward the back for whatever reason. So make sure you tighten this side first, this side second. Okay, there we go. That's done. Got my Ori grips here ready to put on. There's two sizes. The one for the clutch side is a smaller diameter than the throttle side because of that plastic throttle. <clears throat> I've got this technique I picked up when I was working as a bike mechanic cheap hairspray really cheap hairspray you want to just put a little bit right on the handlebar and we're going to squirt a little bit into the grip and then you can just slide that sucker right on there real quick and it will after a while evaporate get sticky and be stuck. And we'll get the clutch side. And of course be sure to position your grips so that the cool Ori logo is showing straight up. Love these grips. Here's another item that needs to go together. This is the kick starter and I didn't put it together because I was missing this little ball right here. It's just kind of like I guess a quarter inch ball. I probably could have gone to a bike shop, a bicycle shop and picked this up but I got it from Honda and it is what keeps this in place when you kick it over to the side or you store it up alongside the bike there's a spring in here see if I can knock that out see there's a spring goes in there and then there's a little groove built onto this part where the the ball catches there and then follows over to here catches there so that all goes together this spring keeps tension on this that goes in here a pin goes through and an e-clip goes on there so the first order of business would be a little bit of grease on this part where the ball goes see if I can just pack a little bit down in there of my red grease I'll wipe away some of that excess I don't need all of that in there and let's put the ball on there and we'll put just a tiny bit of grease on top of the ball to make sure that that has a proper amount of lube Again, wipe off some of that excess. All it's going to do is attract dirt. So the ball's in there, then this goes. I guess if I just lay this flat, 
and I can just squeeze it into place. We got to get the spring in there. I'll give that a push. It's got to compress a little bit to get in there. Get a screwdriver here to help me out. Okay. And we'll get the pin started. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to put a little bit of grease on the pin. Just smear a little on there. And let's see if we can get that started through the spring first. Then we'll push this down, push it the rest of the way, wipe off all that grease. And then on the bottom, we've got the E clip that goes on. That should go on there like that. Let's see, I need a pair of pliers. We'll just squeeze that into place with some pliers. And there it is, all set. Now I need the bolt that goes in there. Hmm. Well, let's see if I can find it in my parts breakdowns here. Uh, front fender, it's gotta be here, there we go. I knew it was close to the top. All right, Kickstarter, there's the bolt I'm looking for. Number 17. It's at eight millimeter by 28 millimeters long. Here's my eight by 28 that I basically cut down and made. I've got some extra um, eight millimeter bolts that I bought just for this reason, because I knew I would need a few here and there along the way. So this is ready to go on the bike. So this pretty much just lines up with the contour on the clutch cover. As you can see, there's a contour there. That looks like a pretty good alignment to me. And we can go ahead and get this bolt in and tighten it up. It's good. And they show no washer on there, so, well, I left it just like that with no washer. I think that'll be just fine. Let's give it a quick test. That works. Now I've got the uh, rear fender to deal with here. I've got four rubber grommets that go on here. Uh, one there, one there, one here and here, and then a couple more here for the tail light mount. So I need to take uh, everything apart here and replace all that rubber. I've got all brand new stuff here. And even the uh, seal for the back, I've got a brand new one of those. Fender's all cleaned up, new rubber grommets installed, everything's been hit with uh, some steel wool. Decided to go ahead and replace that gasket after all. The one that was in there was a little cracked up. So we'll put that in there. I've got a LED bulb in there that came with the bike in my box of parts. So we'll try that out. Get the lens back on here. Got the screws all cleaned up. They have that little dot on them, meaning that they are JIS screws. So we're going to use a JIS screwdriver to put them on. There we go. A little bit of a scuff right there, but I can polish that out later with a uh, headlight polishing kit. Time to mount the fender onto the bike. Got a couple of uh, washers that go in the plastic liner first and let's see then we've got the fender that comes up from the bottom like so okay okay those two are started Woo. let's see if we can get the side ones we should be able to see them now takes care of those and that's it the rear fender is on the tail light okay let's get some wires routed here okay tail light wires let's see we got a yellow the green stripe that goes in there tie around that and not 
real tight. Just enough to keep everything from flying all over the place. Okay, let's test out that tail light. Looks more like a complete bike all the time. Fenders are in place, tail lights in place and working. Got the Kickstarter on. Um, now what I want to do is put on a oil pressure uh, a gauge. I picked this one up on eBay, a nice little liquid filled gauge. And where I want to put it, down here in the oil gallery. Now a lot of people take this plug and they'll tap it out to an eighth inch NPT and just screw a 90 degree fitting in there. And then you have the thing sitting out here. But um, what I don't like about that is at that point the thing is out there vulnerable if the bike tips over. You know, I mean the bike tips over on this side, worst case, you know, you just scratch this up and ding it a little bit. But if that gauge is sitting out there and you break it off, you got an oil leak and you're kind of freaking screwed, you know, you are stuck with an oil leak. So I'm going to be a little daring and tap right into the oil gallery right there. Uh, I've checked it out and there's room to mount that sucker right there. I can glance down at it while I'm driving and it's thick enough, certainly thick enough right here. Drill right into the engine case, tap it out. I can just put something up in there to keep any kind of, you know, um, yuck from getting up in there. There is a little tiny hole down in there, it's like a drain back hole, so I gotta make sure I plug that up well before I go drilling in there and uh, making shavings. I don't want that to get down into the bottom of the engine. So it'll mount up right about here, real nice. Uh, I can see it when, you know, I'm driving, I can just look down at it. The uh, Kickstarter might be a little bit in my way, but I can still see that I got pressure. And I gotta make sure that I drill it in far enough so that when I screw this in, um, it's not gonna bump into the threads. So let me get my caliper out here and set everything to zero. And I'll get a depth reading here on how far those threads are. They're about 13 millimeters deep. So now that I have that measurement, I'll go right here and I'll just put a little line on here in pencil. Now I know I've got to drill my hole past that point right there. And let's see, now I need to figure out how wide it is. So let's take a measurement of uh, roughly the width of that hole. It's about, let's just call it 10 millimeters. So that being the case, um, if I move it in just a little bit, that would put the center line of the hole right about there. So let's just take this line and we'll extend it like that. And that's where the hole needs to be is on that line. And now I need to figure out where it needs to go. And then by the time it screws in, I wanna make sure it doesn't bump into the fins. It needs to screw in deep enough far enough so that it actually makes a good seal. So I can look at this from the side over here, hold it like this, bottomed out, and get an idea about where to drill the hole. Let's see, I'm gonna just hold my pencil here. So right about there. And we'll just translate that line over to there. And there's my spot. That's where I need to put the hole, right there. Let's swing that kickstarter out of the way. I'm going to take my automatic center punch. I'm going to punch a, a little spot right there where I can start drilling a hole. Center punch it. I'm hit it a few times. Now I need to plug this hole up so when I drill I don't get any filings down in there. I got this idea with a piece of uh, just some paper towel. I'm going to put a twist tie around it. And then I'm going to take that paper towel and poke it in there. And now I'm going to push it in there with a screwdriver a little ways right up into the oil gallery and flatten it down a little bit so that I got room to drill in there. Now when I'm all done I can just pull this out and all the filings and stuff will come out with it. I can blast it with a little bit of air ahead of time, make sure I get most of it out, and then pull this out 
the rest of the filings will come out with it. I won't end up with any of my oil. Now let's drill a pilot hole first. I'm gonna stay as perpendicular both ways as I can here. This is some crazy stuff, huh? Drilling a hole in my engine. Drill's really easy, it's pretty soft aluminum. Most of the filings right now are gonna stay outside the engine, that's good. Go nice and slow. And it just punched through. For an eighth inch NPT fitting, I've got a 23 64ths drill bit. No idea what that is in metric, I haven't measured it. But anyway, 23 64ths. I've tested this a couple times on a piece of aluminum I had here, and that's the right size for a eighth inch NPT tap. So this is this is it. I get one shot at this. Before any go any further, I'm gonna take the tap and fit it to that. Just to make sure it should drop right in and just barely be touching the threads, and it is. So now I can finish drilling that hole. I'll stay as true as I can with it. That's that. Okay, now I can tap the hole. Just so happens that this thing fits into a 10 millimeter socket nicely, this tap. I'm gonna put some Marvel Mystery Oil on there for a little extra help with the cutting. We're gonna get this started as true and perpendicular as I can eyeball it. So nice and slow, keep looking from this direction, down this direction. Make sure it's going in at the angle I want it to. Real important to start it straight because if you get crooked, you're kind of stuck. You can't really go back. This is the point where the threads start to really cut. I'm going to take it all the way to where the threads stop on the tap. Take a look in here and see what's going on. I'm going right into that paper towel okay we're gonna stop right there back it out should spin out by hand now I'll blast all this stuff out with some compressed air before I go any further get all those filings out of there I'm going to blow it in through this hole and hopefully blow most of it out through this hole. Let's pull this little bit of grease on the end of a screwdriver works quite well for that. And there they are. I believe I got them all picked up. Fish around a little more and make sure there's Nothing left in there. All right. Okay, we can put the gauge in now. Some people put uh, a little bit of Teflon tape around here. I think this is going to interfere enough that I won't have to do that. It'll actually, um, the threads will be biting into the aluminum enough. I don't think I'll have any problems with oil leaks. I'll know after I run it for a bit. Be real careful with this too. If it starts to get a little too tight, I don't want to go cranking it in too much and chance cracking the case. I definitely don't want to do that. That would just suck bad. So it's still turning pretty easy. Now those threads are tapered, and that's what helps them seal as you put it in. It's actually distressing the metal a little bit. So if I can get around to where this is at the top. I'm gonna call it good, it's getting pretty tight now. Mm. Hang in there, baby. There we go. 
Now we can put the gallery plug back in. Tighten that up. And that's it. Okay, rider's eye view is uh, right about here. Kickstand's a little bit in the way, but if I'm up on the seat and I lean forward a little and I look down, that's pretty much what I see. I can see the gauge, and if I see that needle pointing up, anything other than down, <laughs> then that's good. I think that's gonna work out just fine. And I like it, it's in far enough from the edge here, so I have no danger of breaking it off if the bike should tip over or something. Cool. So let's wrap on the first part of the miscellaneous stuff. I got a little bit more to go. I got some parts coming and next week we're going to be finishing things up. All except for the logos and the paint job, but you know, that'll happen later. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the donations and for sharing the videos and until next time. Got my Ori grips here ready to put on. There's uh, two of them, two sizes. Two, of course there's two of them. Jesus, come on. <laughs>